Okay, welcome to uh, last lecture in uh, this course, log uh, 502. And uh, we are almost finished with the curriculum, still some small part regarding the scheduling missing, which I will present now. Uh, and then I will uh, continue on, uh, uh, I'll finalize this uh, lecture today about looking at uh, the exam problems from, uh, from last year. Uh, we remember from uh, last week that we looked at different techniques for uh, sequencing. We have uh, different uh, objectives and we have different rules according to which objective, which is the most important. We uh, first looked at what we call the first come, first served rule, which is uh, a fair rule. Jobs are processed in the order they come to the shop, so then we just schedule uh, or make a schedule about job one, two, three, four, five, and so on, and uh, finish them in, uh, in, in that uh, sequence. And uh, this is considered to be a fair rule for the customers, uh, but not necessarily the most uh, effective rule according to different objectives. Uh, so we looked at one other technique sh called the shortest processing time, which is uh, about the sequencing rule according to uh, start with the small jobs and finalize the small jobs and then wait with the longer job jobs until um, the end of, of the sequence. And this rule is the most effective is the m if the main objective is to what we call minimize the flow time or the average flow time, which means that we will finish the jobs as soon as possible. First perform the small jobs, get them out of the system, and then uh, focus on, the, uh, on the, the longer jobs. And if this is the main objective, try to uh, minimize the flow time, the average flow time of the jobs, then you should use the shortest processing time strategy. Uh, on the other hand, if you have another objective considered to the most important, which is, uh, for example, to uh, minimize the maximum delay or the maximum tardiness, then you should sort the jobs according to the due date or the due time. Um, this is the uh, EDD strategy. Then you will have a, uh, a sequence which makes, uh, maybe you have lots of jobs delayed, but they are delayed as small, uh, as little as, uh, as possible, and the minimum delay or, or, or the maximum delay for any job will be as small as possible. So if this is the main objective, you should use the earliest due date strategy. And we also looked at the CR, the critical ratio, which is some kind of combination between this SPT and EDD strategy, not optimal to any uh, objective, but it could be an al alternative if you consider the different objectives about minimizing the flow time or uh, uh, minimizing the maximum delay uh, at equal uh, importance. And then you can rather than sort according to the processing time or the due date, make the ratio and compute, compute the ratio of the processing time of the jobs and the, the remaining time, <coughs> uh, and then schedule the jobs with the largest or eventually the smallest CR value. Uh, this depends on how what you are dividing on, on what. Uh, so that's an, another option if you don't consider any of these two objectives as the most important, but you will have some kind of combination between the minimizing the uh, mean flow time and uh, minimizing the maximum tardiness or the maximum delay. And today we will look at some other rules. First one is called Morse algorithm with the main objective to minimize the number of tardy jobs. You realize that you cannot finish all the jobs uh, within the due date, but you will minimize the numbers of uh, number of jobs which are uh, delayed. And then you can use this Morse algorithm, which I will present in a short while. And we have also the last algorithm here, Lawler's algorithm, 
which in uh, uh, well uh, similar to the earliest due date strategy it will m minimize or or this will uh, minimize the maximum uh, flow time subject to or the maximum flow time or or, or also the maximum uh, delay uh, subject to some precedence constraints that you have precedence some jobs needs to be finished before the other jobs are started so when you have such precedence you can use Lawler's algorithm so these are the two strategies I will present now before we look at earlier exam problems so let's first try to summarize the example we used on other techniques we have uh, five different jobs with a given uh, processing time and also a given uh, due date <coughs> and if we look to the Morse algorithm it will look like this this is also from the textbook uh, when we want to minimize the number of tardy jobs we first should look at the se uh, sequence of jobs according to the earliest due date sort the jobs according to when they should be finished and then look at the sequence find the first tardy job the first job in the sequence which is delayed and if no jobs are delayed then we've finished so that's just uh, go to step number four but if some jobs are finished we co should consider the jobs up to that particular job and reject or remove the job with the largest processing time and then return to step two then we have removed one job and look at the remaining sequence if there are still some tardy jobs we should consider jobs again and reject the largest one up to that particular job which is uh, delayed and then when we have no more jobs delayed we should go to step four and append the rejected jobs to the current sequence in any order it doesn't really matter if this is the only objective to minimize the number of tardy jobs when they are delayed they are delayed and there's nothing to do about that but we will minimize the number of tardy jobs but of course you can also have some other second, hand, uh, second strategy for example this is the most important and the second most important might be to, uh, to minimize the flow time and then you should, uh, uh, you, you should also sort the delayed jobs for example according to the, um, uh, to the <coughs> processing time so let's now look at the example we have used on other techniques and if we sort them according to the earliest due date strategy we have seen in the lecture one week ago that we got the strategy or the sequence of three five four two one and then they had the, the due date 31, 32, 33, and 45 and 61. <coughs> this was the due dates for these five jobs. And sort according to the due date, you will find this sequence here. And we can also look at the flow time. Uh, which means that job number three will you we can just write the processing time first so job number three will use 31 days job five will use two days job for one day job uh, 229 and job one 11 which means that all jobs needs 74 days to be completed independent of the sequence to finish all these five jobs you need to use 74 days 
So looking at the flow time with the earliest due date strategy, then we know that job number three will use 31 days. It's finished by day 31. Job number five will use two days, finished by 33. Job number four, one day. Job number two, 29 days. And job number one, 11 more days, and will be finished by day 74. And now looking at the tardiness, we can see that job number three is within time. Job number five, it is delayed because it should be finished by day 32, but it's finished by day 31. And what we now should do, according to Moore's algorithm, we can see what we have already here in step one, sequence the jobs according to the earliest due date. Find the first tardy job. The first tardy job here is job number five. Job number three is delayed, but job number five is uh, job number three is within time, but job number five is uh, delayed. And then at step three, we should consider the jobs up to job number i, the first target job, and reject the job with the largest processing time. Which means we should not reject job number five, which is the one, the first one to be delayed, but we should reject job number three, which is the largest job in the sequence up to one. So here, remove that one. And make a new sequence, which now will start with number five, then four, then two, and number one. Which mean also means that job number five will only take two days, Job number four will take one day, finished by day three. Job number two will take 29 days. And job number one will take 11 more days. And if we now look at the tardiness, we can see that job number five is within time, four is within time, two is within time, and one is within time. So now we have a sequence of four jobs, which all are within time, but we have rejected one job. And we then will go to step number four and append re the rejected jobs to the current sequence in any order. And now we have only one, of course. So then the sequence of these five jobs should be five, four, two, one, and the rejected job, job number three. This is delayed anyway, and it has to be moved to the end because the main objective here is to minimize the number of tardy jobs, and there is not possible to get any sequence of these five jobs where all jobs are within time. So here, the minimum number of tardy jobs will be one. It doesn't mean that this is the only solution that will give one tardy job, but it is at least one solution, one sequence, that will minimize the number of tardy jobs. In this case, we'll have only one tardy job. So I will go through one more example with the, uh, where we have one more jobs. One more job. We have six jobs instead of five. And we also might have more than one tardy job here. We need to, to find out. Uh, here I have also created an earliest due date strategy for the six jobs, uh, or, or an earliest due date sequence, which starts with job number two. Then job three, one, five, four, six. They have a given due date, according to this example, 6, 9, 15, 20, 23, and 
30. And they have a given processing time. 3, 4, 10, 10, 8, and 6. So now, let's look at uh, this sequence. And uh, we can now have a temporary schedule here. <coughs> and this one well, will be equal to the earliest due date sequence before we start executing this uh, algorithm. So now we will have a flow time for the jobs here. 3, 7, 17, 27, 35, and 41. <coughs> So here, the sum of all the processing times will be uh, 41. We need 41 days to finalize all these six jobs. And by using this earliest due date strategy, let's now look at which jobs that are delayed. Job number two is finished within time. Job number three is finished within time. Job number one is two days delayed. Okay, then we need to look at the sequence of the first three jobs, the first jobs uh, up to the first tardy jobs, which in this case is job number one, number three in the sequence, but the job labeled as job, job number one. And then Consider the jobs up to i and reject the job with the largest processing time and return to step 2. Largest processing time among these three jobs will be job number 1. So let's now reject job number 1 and create a new sequence 2, 3, 5, 4 and 6. And then we remember that we have rejected job number one. It needs to be uh, appended to the sequence when we are finished with this uh, algorithm. And with this new sequence, we will look at the flow time. Job number two still takes three days. Job number three will take four days. Job number five will take ten days. Job number four will take eight days. And now we can see that the no, flow time here is, of course, 17. So then we can see that this job, uh, yeah, well, of course, this job should be finished by day 20. So this is also within time. And job number four should be finished by day 23, but it is two days delayed. So now we must consider the jobs up to the first delayed job, this one. Look at job number two, three, five, and four, and reject the largest job among these four jobs. And the largest job is not job number four, which is the first to be delayed, but it is job number five, which is uses 10 days of processing time. So this should now be rejected. And we have rejected job one and job five. Then we have the new sequence two, three, four, and six. And the flow time will still be 3 for number 2, 7 for number 3. Job 4 will take 8 more days, will be finished by day 15, which is within the time of uh, the due date of 23. And job number 6 will take 6 more days, which is finished by day 
21. And now we have a sequence of four jobs, which all are within time. Which means we have finished step one, step two, three, gone back to step two, step three, back to step two, and now if no tardy jobs, which is the case among these four jobs, go to step four, append the rejected jobs to the current sequence in any order. They are delayed anyway. Or if you have any other, uh, well, other second uh, rule, second uh, Im most important rule, you can use that one. Well, here they still have the same processing time, job number one and five. We can use the sequence 1 and 5 here. Then job number 1 will be finished by day 31 and job number 5 will be finished by day 41. This one will be 11, no, uh, 16 days late and this one will be um, 21 days late. So, we have a sequence with only two tardy jobs, only two jobs delayed, but they can be very much uh, delayed here. We can see that 16 and 21 uh, would be much more delay on these two jobs than if you have used the earliest due date strategy. Earliest due date strategy might have well, four probably four tardy jobs. Here we have only two, but they are more delayed than, uh, than by using the other strategy. And we can also find the, yeah, sum here, 130, and the sum here, 30, is this correct? This one, 18. And this one, uh, 37. And then we can look at the four different measures like we are using to compare the, uh, the different strategies. We have the mean flow time, which is the total sum of the flow times, 118 divided by the number of jobs, which is 19.7. The average tardiness will now be a total of 37, divided by the number of jobs, which is 6. This means 6.2. We have the number of tardy jobs, which is 1, 2, which also can be proved that is the minimum. It's not possible to get a sequence of these six jobs with less than two jobs tardy, two jobs delayed. And also the maximum tardiness, which in this case is 21. So these are the four different measures which is used to, um, to compare the different uh, uh, sequences of, of, of jobs. So here, well, in this case, when the penalty for tardy jobs remain the same, no matter how late they are, there is more or less, uh, uh, it uh, doesn't really matter which uh, sequence you will order the tardy jobs 1 and 5 in. If you have some other objective, you can use that one to, uh, to find the order be between uh, on these jobs which are tardy. But this Morse algorithm will make sure that you have a sequence with uh, this as uh, small number of, of tardy jobs as uh, possible. Okay, that's Moore's algorithm. And then we will look at one more strategy, which we called the Lawler's algorithm.
where you will minimize the maximum uh, flow time uh, and also minimize the, the maximum uh, uh, delay uh, subject to precedence constraints that you have some jobs that needs to be finished before the others. <coughs> And now this Lawler's algorithm, uh, when you don't have any precedence constraints, it will be considered as the same strategy as the earliest due date strategy. But when you have precedence constraints, you mean that you have certain jobs that must be completed before the others can begin. Now we should choose the job that will satisfy this condition here, that job number well, k, minimizing of this uh, function, which of course should be according to the variable tau, where this variable will be the make span of the processing time of the remaining jobs. So we should now choose the job which is minimum among the possible jobs according to precedence denoted here as the element of the set V and the minimum job for this tau and the, as mentioned, the tau is defined to be the sum of the time, the processing time of the remaining uh, jobs. And up to n, the number of jobs. And this will now be the processing time here. Uh, and the job we are selecting, this is an iterative process, we need to select one job at a time and when we have a sequence, one, two, three, four, five, six, for example, we will first job, uh, select the job to be last, then this one, and then go forward in the sequence until there are only one job left. So this Lawler's algorithm starts by deciding which job should we wait until the last and then when this is decided it will go one step forward at a time. So let's now have a look at uh, one type of precedence we have here six jobs And we know that job one needs to be finished before job number two. And we can show the precedence diagram like this. One before two and two before three. And in addition, we have a job four, which is independent of the three first, but needs to be finished before job number five and job number six. And here, these are the precedence constraints. Job one before two, and two before three. Job four between, uh, b before number five and six. And these constraints we, uh, is what we need to consider when we are putting up a sequence. <coughs> <coughs> okay, let's now look at one particular uh, one example with six jobs. And we can easily see that here one feasible solution will be one, two, three, four, five, six. This one will 
uh, be feasible according to the constraints because 1 before 2 before 3 and 4 before 5 and 6. So this is a feasible solution but not necessarily the optimal solution. But let's now look at that solution first. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and 6. <coughs> And here we have the jobs. We'll have a processing time and due date. Given as 2, 3, 4, 3, 2, 1. A total of 15. So we need 15 days to finalize all these jobs. Due date will be, in this example, 3, 6, 9, 7, 11, and 7. And if we use this sequence, let's do that first, before we start on the looking at Lawler's algorithm. If we use this sequence, we will have, which is also identical to the first come, first serve, since this is a feasible sequence in this case. We will have completion time 2, 5, 9, 12, 14 and 15 and tardiness there we have a tardy job 5, 3 and 8. Here we have a total sum of load time of 57 and a tardiness of 60. <coughs> so now let's now look at the uh, different uh, uh, objectives or the, the different measures. The mean flow time here will be 57 divided by 6. which is uh, 9.5. The average tardiness will be 16 divided by 6, which is 2.7. Number of tardy jobs, 1, 2, 3. And the maximum Tardiness is in this case 8. This is the job with the highest uh, delay. So these are now the values for the measures with a first come, first serve strategy, which also co uh, will consider the precedence here. In this case, it is a feasible solution. So you can use this strategy and not violate in any of these constraints. Job 1 will be finished before 2 and 2 before 3 and 4 will be finished before 5 and 6. But now let's use Lawler's algorithm. Try to minimize the maximum flow time and then also minimum minimize the maximum uh, delay in this case uh, according to these constraints. So we need to find another sequence which might be better. <coughs> so this will now be the Lawler's algorithm sequence and let's use this uh, algorithm to try to, to find the new sequence and look at the measures for that sequence and compare with the first come first served sequence. And what we first have to do is to find the value of the variable tau. As we saw in the previous formula, this one will be the make span of the remaining jobs, how much time all the remaining job jobs will use to be uh, finished. 
which is pretty easy here because we have six jobs and the sum of the processing time is 15. So the tau value will be the make span of the six jobs, which is, six, uh, which is 15. And now we know this value. Independent of sequence, the jobs, which is finished last, will have a flow time of 15. It will be finished at the end of the sequence. And we need to choose the jobs, the job with the smallest tardiness among those jobs who are feasible, who are uh, allowed to be placed at the last, according to the president's diagram here. So when tau is equal to 15, we have to choose the jobs, the candidates in this case. And the candidates will be last in the sequence, either number three or number five or number six. And then the tardiness of job number three, if it is finished last, will be 15 minus the due date of nine, which is six. Job number five has a due date of 11. So if job number five is placed last in the sequence, it will be 15 minus 11 days tardy, which is four. And job number six has a due date of seven. So if this one is placed at the end, it will be 15 minus seven, which is eight days tardy. And now this rule says that we should choose the job with the lowest tardiness as the last job. Which means using Lawler's algorithm, we will choose job number five with the lowest tardiness as the one to be positioned at the end of the sequence. And we can put that one here. And then let's start again by positioning, uh, finding the position of the remaining five jobs. And now we have to update the tau value. Because it used to be 15, but now the make span of the remaining jobs will be the processing time of the six jobs, expect, uh, except number five, but th because this is now uh, positioned. So now we have five jobs left and the total make span will be 13. We need 13 days to finalize all these five jobs. And now we have candidates. Which jobs can be positioned at the second last in the sequence? Well, we still can use number three and we can use number six but no others because of the precedence. We cannot position one, two, and four because they will have some jobs after them in the sequence. So here we have two alternatives, either number three or number six. And the tardiness of these jobs will now be 13 minus, they have the same due date, which is four, and job number six the tau value of 13 minus 7, which is 6. Which means we should now choose the, the job with the smallest tardiness among the alternative jobs here, either 3 or 6, and this will be job number 3. This one. And then we will continue. Next step, find the job to be on the position here, number four. 
Now we have a tau value, which is the make span of the remaining jobs. And job number three would have four days, which means that uh, the tau value will be 13 minus four, which is nine. And before we take the break, let's look at the candidates here. The candidates for the next position is either job number two or job number six. Job number two because we have found a position for job number three. So by positioning number two next, we will keep the constraints here. We will not violate this precedence constraints. So the alternatives now are number two and number six. We have a tau value of nine, so job number two should be finished by day number six. We'll have three days left, uh, three days delayed, and job number six should still be finished by day seven, which is two days late. Which means we should place job number six at this point and continue with the remaining jobs. And now we have only two alternatives for the next position, either two or four, which is possible because we have already found position for five and six. So let's take a break and continue this example in 15 minutes. <laughs>